Good evening, evening everybody, and, and welcome to the February 17th regular, re regular meeting of the Jersey Village City Council. Um, call to order and announce a quorum is present. Madam Secretary, a quorum is present. All right. Going to do uh, invocation and pledge uh, led by pulpit minister John Gooch from the Jersey Village Church of Christ. Let's pray. Almighty God, we approach your throne of grace this evening on behalf of the city of Jersey Village. Pray for its leadership, pray for their wisdom, for their hearts of service. Pray for the first responders of this city for their protection as they protect the people. And pray for the citizens of this city that your grace and your mercy would flow out on all. I pray for the proceedings that will take place tonight the business of this city will be conducted in a way that honors you. We thank you, Father, for all the blessings that you give us. We thank you for Jesus. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. This pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Move into item C, presentations. Uh, presentation of Employee of the Month, Austin Bleece, City Manager. Mayor and Councilors, I'm excited to announce tonight that the February 2020 Employee of the Month is Dennis Taylor. Dennis continuously puts the city first in everything he does. He has volunteered to cook annual department appreciation lunches for the Parks and Recreation Department and so much more. Since joining the city, Dennis has taken on multiple large supplemental projects while still attending to his regular facility maintenance duties. In addition, Dennis has stepped up to handle the janitorial cleaning while we were in the transition of replacing our contracted janitorial service to part, for part-time employees. All the while, Dennis continued to keep a smile on his face and a positive attitude, and he was always usually pretty good for a joke as well. One thing that impacts everyone, especially everybody here in this room, is that every week or every month, Dennis does all the setup for this, the council chambers, arranging the chairs, making sure everything's neat and tidy for us, and we greatly appreciate that. Dennis is thorough when working with contractors that are providing services to the city. Although it could be easy to simply leave the contractor to do the work, Dennis keeps a keen eye on them to ensure the work is of excellent quality and top-notch service for the city. He provides continuous support throughout the department with support to the parks, recreation, and golf course divisions and all the other city departments as well. Dennis is always prepared to lend a helping hand and offers his knowledge of facilities and maintenance to others and employees also. So Dennis, thank you for everything you do for Jersey Village and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for everything you do. Moving into item D, citizen comments. Any person who desires to address council regarding an item on the agenda will, will be heard at this time in compliance with the Open Meetings Act unless the subject matter of the comment is on the agenda. City staff and, and council members are not allowed to discuss the subject. Each person is limited to five minutes for comments to city council. Uh, first card I have tonight is uh, Mike Stimbridge. Hi, uh, Michael Stimbridge, 15422 Jersey Drive. Uh, I'm with my wife, uh, Anna, here. And um, <clears throat> so um, I did call um, City Manager Austin Blease. He's very polite to me. Uh, we had a very professional conversation. Um, and, uh, you know, I asked him about the elevations. And um, he said that there's a plan to try to um, buy out the homes on Jersey Drive uh, and then, you know, put new ones there and all that. Uh, with a developer possibly um, but um, so I'll just state briefly um, we were in the first round of elevations and then the second round and then there's there are three rounds now and we're not in any of those rounds and um, so uh, we would just like to be in um, a future round of elevations or or a redo or whatever because uh, we flood and flooding season is coming up 
and uh, so we're nervous about it. We're happy for the people that have the homes going up right now on um, you know, West Jersey, I mean down from East Jersey, um, but we're just wondering if East Jersey could get some elevations, and uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Austin, this looks to, I'm gonna relate this to item G1 and home elevations. One of the things he mentioned was that we're looking at buyouts on Jersey Drive. Um, from my understanding, we're also looking at tear down, rebuild, cooperative, cooperative efforts with the homeowner, correct? Right. It's more of a tear down, rebuild cooperation between homeowners, uh, home builders in the city, not necessarily just tear downs or buyouts. Okay. Just making sure we're not strictly doing buyouts. Thank you. Next card I have is Mark Malloy. Hi, my name's Mark Malloy, and I live at 7803 Hamilton Circle, past city council member of the city of Jersey Village, Texas. Citizens' comments for the 02-17-2020 city council meeting. Please make my verbal comments and documents given to the city secretary a permanent record of the meeting. So anyway, the first thing I wanted to talk about is with Mr. Warren and him stating what the golf course made in revenue each month and so i've looked at that and the golf course shows for this budget year revenues over expenses at a loss of twenty six thousand seven hundred forty one dollars and forty eight cents and that this time that is not counting many other costs associated with the golf course such as an estimated five hundred thousand dollars owed for this year's principal and interest payments that will be made to continue paying for the golf course. And then the other reason I'm here is I'm here this evening to present to the Jersey Village City Government a document that I wrote and then took to the property owners that own the property to the center of White Oak Bayou on the north and west sides of the channel. I informed them that the city government at this meeting was going to consider hiring a consultant group for $70,000 to do a parks master plan. I informed them that the city, through their comprehensive plan, has intentions sometime in the future to try to build trails on the homeowner's property along the White Oak Bayou and the conveyance channels along White Wall Street and Coaster Street. I was only able to cover from Ecuador Street west to Lakeview by the time of the meeting. The document has the signatures of all the property owners I could reach that were home that do not want the trail. Out of all of the property owners that I contacted, there was only one that said they were okay with the trail being built. I'm also here to ask the city government to give the property owners that have a homestead exemption filed with the Harris County, Texas, the full state allowed 20% exemption instead of the 14% that they are getting at this time. I'm also asking that the city increase the 65 year and older additional exemption from the current $75,000 exemption to the $160,000 exemption, which is what Harris County and the city of Houston is giving their citizens. The city government per them has stockpiled an estimated $17.5 million to be able to go on a spending spree. <clears throat> The city government should allow the citizens to vote on any election ballot or on an ele in election ballot if they want a new $8 million city hall building to be built and if they should be, if it should be moved from its current location to the south side of US 290. There was a recent poll placed on the Jersey Village Next Door website that was eventually removed by someone other than the original poster. The results of the poll were 76% did not want City Hall moved to the south side of US 290. The city government should allow the citizens to vote on, on an, during an election, on an election ballot if they want a new golf course clubhouse and convention center built per contractor bids to be anywhere from five to seven million dollars. City government should allow the citizens to vote on an election ballot if they want the city government to spend per their consulting estimate one million dollars on a supplemental treated wastewater irrigation system. I'm asking Again, why the city government is not adhering to the engineering consultant's recommendations to build the golf course berm at the 108 feet elevation, which is, which if it is built, should be the elevation it should be constructed at. I'm also providing information about the Harris County Flood Control District in January or February of this year purchasing 27 acre, the 27 acre revenue 
Country Club for $11.5 million and the intent, the intent to buy the additional estimated 200-acre golf course ground in the near future to be converted into a very effective flood control basin that will also be built out into very nice public park spaces with many types of activities for children as well as adults. The city of Houston has bought the Inwood Golf Course facility and is converting it into a very effective stormwater detention basin, as well as public park space that serves the surrounding community with many activities options. The clubhouse has been converted into a meeting conference facility that is used for many activities. So that's basically all I wanted to talk about today. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, next card I have is Scott Schubring. I don't have near as much to talk about as Mark does there, but um, so my name is uh, Scott Schubring. I live at uh, 15814 Tenberry Street. I lived in the city for about 10 years, uh, raising two boys, one at Post right now and one at Cook Middle School. So I attend these meetings and when time allows, and I've heard you know, specific concerns repeated from the same few people yeah, time and time again, but it's rare to hear people like myself come up and speak, and, and I'm here to kind of give thanks when it comes back around to it. You know, we all live, uh, at least people my age, like we live pretty incredibly hectic lives. And uh, balancing work and play and kids' activities and, and staying, you know, health and uh, all the other kind of stuff. You know, parents like myself, the ones who make up a large percentage of the city are busy taking kids to soccer, baseball, basketball, swim, taekwondo, scouts, um, and would rather be with their family than standing right here and uh, you're explaining, uh, you know, giving thanks to everybody. But um, so I'm, I'm here to give the other side of the story. So first, you know, the city can't stay stagnant. Um, the status quo is not good enough. So we must always work to improve and attract the right kind of people to our neighborhood. You know, new couples looking to start a family or young families uh, want a community they can connect with and be active with their children without having to drive 30 minutes during rush hour to go someplace. Um, they're looking for amenities like, you know, like we're like nice parks, the splash pads we added, dog parks, nice walking trails. He mentioned the walking trails a minute ago, uh, hiking trails, you know, all community events. You've done a great job promoting uh, recent community events. Uh, space to have, you know, events in, like, you know, this building here, went out for Cub Scouts many times. Uh, it's nice to have more opportunities like that. So it's amazing how often this place is uh, always uh, rented. It rents out every, all the time. So um, decent restaurants close by, uh, a nice place to have you know, a good beer or a glass of wine, a nice coffee shop. You know, right now, if we want to have a, a craft beer someplace, I've, I've got to go in town, or especially if we want to have a place that doesn't allow smoking. A uh, place, you know, CrossFit, yoga, someplace close by would be fantastic. You know, we're, playing, we're, we're playing catch up here compared to the other neighborhoods around. So if you've been to the newer master plan communities that say like Coal Creek or you know, Bridgeland, Town Lake, you can kind of look to see what other, what, you know, people are looking for in neighborhoods. And it's, it's all that stuff I mentioned up there. Um, you know, they're sacrificing, you know, extreme drive time to go out there and drive out there to those far out places so they can have those amenities. We're much closer in. We can add these type of things. We'll attract the right people to our neighborhood to keep the, the neighborhood growing. So if we continue to focus on amenities found in modern neighborhoods, we'll be doing ourselves a favor so we can stay around in the long run and not turn into a city full of rental properties. Um, I've heard complaints in the past about tax rates in our city, I've, um, you know, but have you ever seen our HOA cost of those other, other neighborhoods? They pay over $1,000 in their HOA, whereas you know, if you're not on a lake, you don't pay an HOA fee here. So you compare your tax rates to your HOA. That's, you, gotta, you have to look at the whole picture here, right? Not sure everyone is doing that. Um, I'd like to remind everyone that the city council and the mayor positions are non-paid volunteer roles, and their services the city needs to be welcomed and encouraged with positive feedback rather than verbal abuse. I've heard I've been standing in, the, in this room before and heard some, some you know verbal abuse and unprofessionalism back to the committee. It's really hard to find volunteers out there to step up. I do quite a bit of volunteer work, both Cub Scouts, you know swim team, I did you know, soccer, um, I do stuff with work. Uh, just last week I volunteered at Cook, uh, Cook Middle School to speak for this the Junior Achievement uh, Inspire program. And um, 
I had to do two roles. Why? They couldn't get people to step up and speak. So I had to do double shifts, spoke twice, you know, two 20 minute sessions per 50 minute period all day long because they couldn't find another person with, to speak to STEM. There's not enough people out there who are willing to step up. And one of the reasons are they don't want to take the abuse they're getting. So um, it's not, you know, we want to be encouraged to our volunteers who are stepping up and helping out the neighborhood. Um, you'll notice that many of the people in the room, you know, volunteer and do, do things, their wives do things. You will also notice that they're the same people. The same people, you, when you, go to, you go to post, the same people you see there are always the same people. You go do a volunteer gig, go to a swim meet, the same people. Doing double shifts, triple shifts, multiple roles, because no one else is stepping up. Hard to find volunteers. Do not yell at them. Um, in summary... i got to cut you off, Scott. <laughs> it's five you. minutes, but thank you very much. Do you have anybody else desiring to speak tonight? All right, move on to the uh, city manager's report. Uh, does anybody on council have any questions for a city manager? Austin, I just uh, wanted to, looking at the golf course finances, uh, Mr. Malloy brought it up. I thought it was uh, pretty interesting. Um, if you look back on the revenues that the city has collected from the golf course, uh, these last couple of months are usually historically some of the lowest. Uh, and yes, uh, as of right now, the golf course fund uh, is for the year about negative 26,700 uh, during the slowest period of the year for the golf course, middle of winter. Uh, so the fact that it's only behind by that much when our highest revenue months are yet to come is an impressive feat. So uh, I think that congrats are due to the staff of the golf course uh, for keeping the course in great shape even through the winter and continuing to be able to drive uh, business there. Uh, I'm really looking forward to see what they're able to do when the weather turns out even better than it is now. If I could add to that, Bobby, the winter months are when they do most of their maintenance work also, so the costs are higher. That is a good point. They're replacing a lot of bunkers right now. And, and don't forget about the weather. The number of days available are less during the winter. <clears throat> One other thing, um, Austin, I noticed that uh, when reviewing the uh, income balances that uh, sales tax were way ahead of schedule. Um, and uh, I just wanted to know, do you believe that trend will continue? Yeah, so as of, of Friday, we're about 50% collection rate for sales tax for the year from what we projected. So we're definitely above, uh, moving faster than we thought we would, which is great. Um, for the remainder of this fiscal year, we think that will continue, but we are keeping an eye on the state controller's office. Um, their rulemaking process for the online sales tax could impact how, how our sales tax is generated and remitted to the city. So we're keeping an eye on that, but uh, for right now, everything looks good. Anything else? Uh, last month, I, I said thanks to a lot of different departments, but I think I left off one that was pretty important. And uh, Harry Ward's department, he's in charge of public works, and I know that they've been doing a lot of street panel replacements in-house. And the fact that it's saved, I think one just one panel replacement saved something like $40,000 and, and repeated that over and over and over for the different panels that we have. And I just wanted to point out that that's great savings but doing that in-house. And I wanted to just highlight that, and, your, and we appreciate that very much. Anything else? All right. Move on to the consent agenda. Is there any, any item on the consent agenda that council would like to place into the regular, regular uh, session? I don't want to make a change. However, I'm going to abstain because of F3. I don't have any problems with any others, but I'm going to abstain for the whole vote. Noted. Anybody else? If not, looking for a motion. I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Move on to regular session, item number one, consider resolution number 2020-12, authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with Jeffrey S. Ward and Associates for FMA program home elevation grant administration and project management services austin police city manager mayor and counselors as part of the home elevation grant funds that we're expecting to receive um, we're went out for rfq for home elevation grant management services similar to what we did last time we received two proposals one from jeffrey ward and associates and the other one from ibts we re reviewed the proposals 
And Jeffrey Ward is the one that has the highest points. He had 92 points, and uh, IBTS had 88. So based on these rankings, we're recommending Jeffrey S. Ward and Associates. They've done work for us. They're doing the work for us right now. They've done great work, and they have done a lot of work in the county. So they're very well experienced. We got the full list of things that they will be doing for us in the packet. And based upon the grant funding for this portion of the project, the extensive work outside this company will do. It seems like a very valuable use of funds uh, to use them. We would not enter into any contract until the grant has been officially awarded, which should happen sometime in the next week to months to six months. Um, we're waiting for the state on that, or for FEMA on that. Um, so the grant amount is seven, um, the total grant amount is 761,000. Our cost share is 11, or $117,034 for a total co project cost of 878,000. That's for the elevations and everything. Any questions for Austin? Is this the company used with the first grant? Yes, sir. Uh, Austin, are we anticipating uh, any grant applications or grant programs that would cover the local share like they did with uh, the current ongoing elevations? We are. We, we believe they will. Um, we're waiting for something in writing from the state on that still. Um, the way I read this, this is part of that our cost share? Correct. So we'll pay about 9% or so of this total cost of this contract. And, and this is not in joking, this is just for a full, uh, Jeffrey S. Ward is no relation to Harry Ward? Not to my knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for, Jess, uh, for Austin? All right. Um, seeing none, I'm looking for a motion on the, res on the resolution. I move to approve resolution number 2020-12. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion on the topic? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Item number two, consider resolution number 2020-13, selecting contractors to complete home elevation work in relation to the FY 2018 FEMA Flood Mitigation Assistance Grant. Austin Blee, City Manager. Mayor and Counselors, just as last time we've gone up for RFQ for elevation companies to actually do the elevating, this time we only have four homes, so we're recommending we only get two, uh, pre-qualified two contractors, one being Planet 3 and one being Excello. We received their RFQs, ranked them, and those two are the highest point getters. Um, both of those companies are doing work with us right now in the current round of elevations. Both of them seem to be doing good work as well, so it's a good, uh, good thing for us to be able to see that as well. So. Um, once we do get the final award, we'll host a meeting with the contractors, the grant administrator, and the homeowners to, to get everybody on the same page and, and talk about next steps moving forward. Any questions for Austin? Um, Austin, I see uh, uh, we've got a three-person team ranking everyone. Uh, Architectura, is that one of our current elevation vendors? They are, yes. And I noticed that of the three-person team, there was a six-point spread between the average and median. The median was 96. So that means the person in the middle, probably someone the same or uh, higher in point scoring. And then the average was 90. So that means that third person scored them pretty low. Uh, are there any concerns uh, with the uh, current uh, work that they're doing that may have influenced the, the points here? The, uh, the current work is definitely okay. Um, there's no... No issues with the current work, it's, uh, but it comes down to the fact we only really need two for this round as well. So, I, I was just making sure Christian didn't score them low because of something that was going on right now, but uh, okay. Any other questions for Austin? And, and just, to be, just to be clear, this is, this is uh, for this upcoming year, which I think was... For the grant that we applied for, for back in November of 2018. Gotcha. Just for clarification, is the, it's, this is for four homes. Is this still part of phase one? This would be uh, the second round, phase two. This is phase two, and there's only four homes? Correct. Yeah, first year was 18, went down to 17, and then second year was four, and the third application round we just, we just pushed forward was for thir 30. Yeah. 30. You'll have to remember in phase two, we, we also submitted a grant application for teardown rebuilds, part of the FEMA funding. Um, which that one was denied, and we also applied for a $100,000 design grant for the E-127. So with all three of those, we've, we thought that was in, going to be keeping staff plenty busy to, to manage all of those ones. All right, so it's a low number for elevations, but we also uh, had other projects that we applied for that, that may not be as visible as homes going up into the air. Correct, yes. Gotcha. Yeah, I would caution against thinking about this just in the set way that we have it in the plan, uh, because we also don't 
know for sure what funds are going to be available. There may be more, there may be less. I think at this point our approach is simply every opportunity that's available, we try to put our best foot forward, try to put as many homes in there, and uh, and just push forward as fast as we can. All right. And, you know, I think it's worth reiterating, too, that it's a competitive grant process. Um, we're competing with municipalities and states all, all over the country. And so none of this we should take for granted. That there, I get a lot of questions about, hey, why did this home get included and this home is, is way more severe? It's, it's about creating a, a certain score that's going to get as many homes as we possibly can uh, the help that they need uh, as quickly as possible. But it's not going to happen all at the same time. It's not going to happen all, all at once. But we're going to do our, the best depending on many different variations in that funding year's availability to get the most help from most people. So there's some homes that you wouldn't even think have flooded that are, are getting elevated. And it's because their their BCE score may be low, but put that with a home that's repetitively flooded, uh, you know, that's an SRP home and, uh, you know, its score is five. So it evens out. But, you know, otherwise we would just put a packet with all high scores and we would totally get it. But then in years down the road, we would those homes that would have received help won't, won't have as high a score. So there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of variables that go into this. It's, it's unfortunately a little heartless when it comes down to it because it is about BCE scores and points and money. And while, you know, we have the severity that, you know, we have, we want to see as much done as, as possible, as fast as possible. There is a process and there, there's a reason behind the madness. So, um, you know, keep, keep asking the questions and keep keep participating it's a long-term flood recovery plan not a short-term quick recovery plan it's for years and years and years that that we're going to need help so i think y'all are doing a great job i mean it speaks volumes that you've been awarded so so much we, we never thought we would even get this far um you know and and what you've received in award funds so far has, has been amazing so keep keep that keep that going any other questions on this uh topic all right, I'm looking for a motion on resolution 2020-13. Uh, Move to approve resolution number 2020-13. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion on the topic? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Item number three, consider resolution number 2020-14, authorizing the city manager to execute a contract with Burdett Consultants, LLC, for a, master, for a parks master plan. Jason Alfaro, parks director. Good evening, mayor and council. Um, last month, City Council approved Resolution 2020-07, authorizing the City Manager to negotiate a contract with Burdett. Uh, since that time, we had an opportunity to meet with them. Um, the, the contract that they presented outlines uh, the type of meetings that we'll have. We'll have one uh, public workshop. We'll have um, one open house event to present the draft recommendations. They'll also have a booth at one of the city-sponsored events, such as Spring Fling or uh, Farmer's Market. Or, and then uh, finally, they have attend city staff official meetings, which may include the Parks Board or City Council. So we I think we have a pretty decent amount of public input opportunities uh, right there. Uh, the, the Recreation and Events Committee would be the uh, steering committee during the process, and to allow citizen comment and engagement definitely will be encouraged. Uh, this would allow the community input throughout the entire process. A uh, project would take roughly six months to complete if the work commenced in March uh, upon the execution of this contract. A few of the key elements that will emerge from the plan will be recommendations and improvements to the parks, programming changes, opportunities for expanded quality of life programs, partnership opportunities, recommendation to ordinances and policies, and some park conceptual renderings. Um, the, the fee that we have uh, proposed is $66,000 and we had $70,000 budgeted for this. Thank you, Jason. Any questions for Jason? Uh, Jason, we do have the Comprehensive Plan Update Committee that's going to be appointed uh, in uh, June. Um, is there any plan to kind of um, work some of this together? I mean, I know that the Comprehensive Plan covers a lot more than parks, but it does have a, a, some impact on the Comprehensive Plan. Is there uh, any thought as to how that might be integrated? We can definitely look at that and see how we can uh, involve both of those two parties. Yeah, and, and I mean, the other good thing is this actually is a a much deeper treatment of the park situation than the comprehensive plan. I saw it's a 10 year action plan. So that's, uh, and it looks like it's very detailed in regards to what they're going to look at, uh, as far as potential, um, uh, infrastructure and, uh, opportunities to expand, uh, the opportunities for recreation in the area. So I think that's phenomenal. Yes, sir. 
I, I agree. I was about to say, I mean, the comprehensive plan was very much an overview and this, this really kind of dives down deeper into, into the facilities that we have as far as parks and recreation goes. We're definitely seeing a lot more programs, we're seeing movies in the park, we're seeing farmer's markets. We're, we're, we're starting to, I, I know this year we're starting to implement uh, so, so softball and kickball and all these different things. And, and, and we've never really done that before. So it'll be nice to sort of see um, how those programs are impacted by the state of our parks. And I know the citizens, uh, at least when they talk to me, parks are parks and amenities are a very big uh, part of their lives. And um, you know, we've we've improved with the splash pad. We've we've added the dog park. We've we've uh, you know started to Im improve accessibility in, in in the parks for disabled uh, children. And so it's nice to see that that move forward. But to get feedback from the citizens on exactly what they want to see in their parks will, will be great. So I'm I'm happy to see this move forward. Um, with that, is there any other questions for Jason? And if not, I'm looking for a motion. Move to approve resolution number 2020-14. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. And that concludes our very, very short meeting. We're gonna end with mayor and council comments, starting with Mr. Warren. I just want to thank everyone for coming out. Uh, maybe we can do more short meetings like this rather than the marathon sessions some of you may be used to. Uh, but uh, I do want to encourage people to continue to come out uh, and to stay engaged with their city government. And as always, if you have any questions or you have feedback for us or anything of that sort, uh, please do email us. Uh, that's by far the best way to get a hold of us. Uh, happy to schedule time to meet with people in person or uh, schedule a phone call if you've got concerns or anything you'd like to discuss. We're here for you. I'll echo Bobby's comments. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is uh, members of council and the mayor were invited to the uh, Jersey Village Senior Outreach uh, meeting, uh, annual annual dinner this, this past January. Um, many of us were able to attend. I found that to be a gr not only the event great, but uh, to see what uh, the, that crew has done in two years, um, just two years. The, the room was full. Um, well attended and the n number of programs they have um, didn't know much about it until I got to council but uh, I, I plan to throw my hat in the ring and help them out uh, as, a, as a private citizen whenever I get the chance um, the other thing is uh, if you'll see in the the other committee room they're setting up to vote I encourage everyone to uh, no matter which primary you take part in educate yourself on the candidates the issues where people stand and uh, Use your opportunity to go vote and go do it. Early, uh, early voting starts tomorrow. Elections have consequences. Go vote. Um, <coughs> uh, congratulations, Chief Riggs. Uh, I know you start officially as the full-time chief on Mar March 1st. Very excited about that. Um, congratulations. Um, JVSO ties so well with Scott's comments tonight. Um, that is a group of neighbors who are civic minded that decided to devote themselves and when you look at that group you see the same people volunteering over and over and over and unfortunately scott that's just a problem society-wide I, I i can't believe how many different groups you look it's the same people over and over and volunteerism in the U.S. has just gone down to sad, sad levels. And it's really something we need to really instill in our kids. That has to change. You know, you can't, that, there's volunteer things that can't be changed into paid positions, paid people, because we can't afford it. And um, I, I really would love to see more volunteerism. Get out, you know, don't be scared of, what if I screw up? There are people that will guide you. If you're willing to help, they'll come alongside you. So that's it. We did not introduce Chief Riggs, did we? He's been here. We, we, he's been our interim. I was going to introduce him more formally in March. But, okay, well. uh, <laughs> hey, For those that don't know, he is our permanent chief now. Sorry, there was an email. <laughs> <laughs> email. Anyway, I'm gonna uh, go ahead and uh, double up on what James expressed about the volunteers. I mean, I'm, it, the ones I normally mix with aren't, aren't the same as other people, and it, sometimes some groups get overlooked, but it, it came to my attention of all the parents that are out there volunteering their time, 
with the kids groups and that's extremely important activity so I want to express thanks for that. Thanks everybody. Uh, I also want to welcome Chief Riggs um, to, to, the, to the team officially March 1st. Um, we've, I, I know the guys and gals in the police department have, you've earned their respect doing ride alongs with them it, while you were an interim chief. And so it's good to have somebody on, on the staff that really takes an interest in, in, in the day-to-day -day work um, that our police officers do. So welcome aboard. Um, I, I want to thank everybody who came up to give a, a comment and I um, want to thank everybody who's volunteered to make the city a great place. We have many opportunities opening up in the, in the near future. As we mentioned before, there's going to be the, the Parks Master Plan, which all citizens are invited to give comments on. Um, we have the Comprehensive Plan Commission that's going to re look at the, the comprehensive plan that we approved back in 2015 and, uh, and, uh, and you know, make sure it's updated um, to reflect our priorities today. Um, so there's many opportunities to participate. And again, we, as Scott mentioned earlier, there's seeing the same people over and over and over. It, it is kind of frustrating. So if you can kind of find the time to volunteer for an hour a month, maybe two hours a month to uh, participate in a, a commission, that's a great one to participate in. Uh, that's how I got on council. I really got in, involved in the city behind the scenes by touring facilities, meeting with the city staff and seeing how how the sausage is made and and it, it it really piqued my interest and that's really kind of how i got interested in council so that's a great one to get get involved in um i think that's about it can i blabber on for five more minutes no uh elections uh starts tomorrow as it was mentioned early voting so please participate inform yourself and and uh there we go that's it everybody have a great month meeting adjourned